Let's take a quick look at the navigator and the preview window. Uh, let's first just um, have one source active so we can uh, put into the layers. So uh, in the navigator section you have uh, an indication of the active layer uh, being the yellow uh, circle. So and you can also see in the preview window you have a yellow frame and the layer number indicating the active layer. Uh, layer 1 is currently turned off so I want to just uh, add a source to it to enable it and let's just choose the one we already activated 101 source. You can see it now appearing in the MoFo uh, window and you can see uh, also that if you look at this line, if I turn it off again, you, s you can see that it indicates which source is loaded into the layer. If you're using a Mac, you can also see the actual source uh, in the preview window, a feature which is uh, currently not available on Windows. You do that by clicking on the V in the navigator. So what can you do in the preview window? You can uh, move the layer directly around. You can also do this from the directly on the projector output or in the MoFo window. You can uh, do the same thing with scale. You see the indicator here changes to an S, which means I'm now controlling the scale with the with the mouse. Or you can use uh, the K, which indicates um, that you are adjusting the corner pins. So if I switch back to uh, placement or positioning again, I can also restrict the mouse movement by holding down the shift key. So this kind of locks it either to the X and Y axis depending on if I drag more or less in the upwards or sideways, which can be useful for a more precise uh, placement of a layer. You can also of course use either the the number boxes directly to uh, to position, uh, scale and adjust the corner pins. And a new feature are these arrows uh, which basically makes it possible to do really precise adjustments without having to worry about going uh, way off uh, the original uh, position. If you keep holding the arrow, it will move faster and faster, basically. Uh, the corner pin feature is uh, either based on being in a manual or automatic mode. So far we've been in the automatic mode, which is indicated by the A here. So let's switch back to the, to the corner pins. and we click on the manual one then you kind of have to decide which corner you want to affect so now I'm affecting the top left corner I can move it anywhere I want the bottom right corner same thing a new feature in uh, VPT6 is the m possibility of using a mesh for distorting the layer to uh, select mesh as your way of distorting the layer, you click on mesh. This uh, resets your corner pins for this layer, just so you know. You should decide uh, if you want to use mesh or corner pins. There's already an uh, active mesh here you can see, uh, but to see the mesh editor just click on the mesh editor and it should show up like here. Uh, if you want to see the grid you turn on the grid on button. Let's just reset the layer now. You choose the dimensions of the 
control grid from this drop menu, so it can be anything from 3 points to up to 8 by 8 points, which is quite a lot. To distort the mesh, you simply just click and drag on the points. You can select multiple points by shift clicking on them, which can be useful for So now I've selected four points and I can now move them together. To deselect them I can just click on the Select None button. There's also a possibility to work with uh, uh, the set axis, so the depth uh, distortion. It is uh, not visible in the editor itself, but you can see it clearly on the output that something is going on. To actually see that we are working in the set axis, you can just try by adjusting the the rotation of the layer, and you can see that it's actually also happening in the set axis. If you want to reset the mesh, you just uh, click on the reset. You can see that there's a yellow frame also in the MOFO window. If you don't want to see the frames in the outputs, you just turn it off by clicking on the F button in the navigator. So when you close the mesh editor, the mesh is saved uh, with that layer. Uh, one more feature in the this section uh, to turn on and off or to change the transparency from uh, 0 to 100 or from on to off you um, can click on this button. This is also an indicator of the actual um, transparency level. One way of adjusting the transparency is by holding in the ALT key and then dragging uh, vertically in the preview window. You can see both the the box here changes uh, gray level and also this number indicates uh, the current uh, transparency level of the active layer. You can also see a mesh appeared here when I uh, switch to mesh from the corner pin which is a useful indicator, at least. Okay, let's add uh, another layer so we can see a few more things going on. So, now uh, the layer 2 is the active layer. You can see that the previous active layer, the number 1, is now a grey outline and uh, the active layer is the the yellow outline and you see the layer number here and it is currently off and it's currently faded to zero so let's choose uh, let's just use the same source for this one as well the one on one source and uh, we want to make it visible so we can either click here to make it visible so why is nothing happening well this is because layer 2 is hiding underneath layer 1 so to make it visible I would need to move it outside the area covered by layer 1 basically the navigator also contains the, the texture section which has uh, one part which you might be fami familiar with from uh, previous versions of EPT, you can colorize the layer. There's also the fader here. But maybe the most interesting part is um, this section here, the, the texture, which was also there in the previous version, but here it is much easier to actually use part of a source as the texture. The texture is what uh, you see as the content in the layer. So 
I can decide to say from this shortcut menu that I only want to use the top right fourth of the source as my as my uh, content in the layer. You can when I turn on the texture section here, a T appeared. This is just a helpful indicator to uh, let you know what's going on. Okay, uh, let's uh, switch back to layer one and uh, let's try the the mask section. You might be familiar with it if you've worked with previous versions of uh, VPT. You can either select an already existing mask uh, from the the mask f menu. Currently, there's only one available. To turn on the mask, you would. Uh, turn on the mask button here. You can see you get a M appearing uh, indicating that there's an active uh, mask uh, in this layer. So if I just wanted to... so you can maybe a bit easier see that it's uh, on top of the other one here. Okay. I can also uh, choose to put a blur on this mask. And we have, as before, the, the circular mask and the edge blend. So this is what it would look like in the preview window if you are on the Mac and uh, you want to see the sources. Uh, we also have um, a solo button which lets you kind of mute all the other layers so you can see uh, you are currently active layer only. This is uh, indicated with a circle with an S in it. Quite useful. You also can lock a layer. Uh, this means you can try how much you want to change the layer, but it's actually not possible to change it. This can also be very useful so you accidentally don't uh, mess up the settings of a layer. Another extremely useful feature is the ability to copy from one layer to another. So let's say I want to copy layer 2, the active layer. I click copy, I go to another layer, I click paste, and it basically just gets all the values uh, associated with uh, the layered layer it was copied from. So now I have a, a copy of uh, layer 2 in layer 3. I can also reset the layer settings which gets back to the default settings which is right there. The blend mode uh, for the layer is hidden here. It's the equal sign is the just the normal blend mode, then you have the additive blend, which doesn't really make sense for the bottom layer, but if we apply that on the top layer you see a difference. We have the additive and we also have the multiply layer. Very uh, important to know about, of course, is the internal help files. So if you click on this, it will probably be way outside the recorder window here now. But you can basically get a lot of information on the on the different sections of VPT. So this is, for instance, the navigator help. This is the preview window help. 